Hi guys, this is Richard from Spirits of Japan. We're on our next segment for the list of emperors of Japan. Longest imperial lineage on the earth, 2,679 years. Um, we talked about in our last segment was Emperor Jimu, which was the first emperor, descended as the great-great-great-grandson of the supreme goddess of Japan, Amaterasu. Um, he was the, the, the one who, who defeated um, whatever negative forces that were here and uh, kind of took over the job that his uh, father and his grandfather and his great-grandfather could not do and um, and uh, established himself as the first emperor of Japan. So with that said, um, he had um, uh, an interesting um, um, little scenario going on here is he had, uh, where depending on what you read, two wives or a wife and a consort. Uh, his wife, um, his his wife was Hime Tatarai Isuzu, Tatarai Isuzu, and she was the uh, daughter of uh, a god called Koto Shironushi, who was the son of another god called Omononushi. Omononushi is the god of Omiwa Mountain, which is a place that I take people on. Um, uh, one of my tours. It's south of Nara. It's in an area called Sakurai. Um, it's got one of the oldest shrines there um, in Japan called Hibara Shrine. A little hard to get to. There's um, um, multiple shrines in that area. Uh, my friend owns a Soman restaurant down there. So I, I go down there frequently. Beautiful place. Just absolutely beautiful place. And no non-Japanese people around. It's very quaint, quiet. Uh, amazing. It's a power spot. Because to get up on that mountain um, behind Omiwa Shrine, you have to go to this other shrine and you got to promise you're not going to take any pictures, talk, or eat while you make this pilgrimage up to the top of this uh, this uh, this mountain. The mountain and uh, Omono Nushi were put in place by I think the tenth emperor Sui Sui Nin um, or Sui Jin. Hmm, I have to look that one up again. But uh, there was a plague. And there was uh, 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 no food, and there was all kinds of issues going on. And uh, one of the emperors had a dream to establish, and we'll revisit there, uh, that when we get to that point, which is the 10th or 11th emperor. I think it's the 10th. But um, uh, to establish um, uh, something to Omononushi there, and dead, and everything turned back to normal. So um, his granddaughter, uh, Himetata Ra Isuzu, um, I'm sure they had a nickname for her, uh, married Jimu. And Emperor Jimu um, also had um, another girl on the side. Uh, and you're going to see all these these guys. I mean, there's one emperor, and if I'm remembering correctly, correctly wife could have babies, seven seven consorts, and had 51 kids. We'll, we'll get to that person, too. But uh, he only had one more that we know of. Uh, I'm sure there were more. But uh, this uh, young lady, Ahiratsu Hime, um, had two of his children, the first two. Uh, the, the oldest was a guy named Tagashimimi, then a, a younger kid called uh, Kisumimi. And his wife, uh, Hime Tatara Isuzu, um, had three. There was a Hikoyai, there was Kamo, Kamo, Kamoya Mimi, and then um, Suize, which he had a, almost like a Hawaiian name. It was like Kamunu Kawa Mimi or something like that. Uh, but... Um, uh, Suize was actually the youngest of the five, so two with one, three with the other. So he he was the youngest of the five, and then when um, Jimu died, uh, this the consorts um, because he he was a crown prince. He was he was uh, he was noted as as being worthy of being coming the emperor, but uh, his really really everybody knew he was an ass. Um, he was really mean to the people. He did a lot of bad things, even when he was little. Um, uh, just a little terror on wheels. And there was another emperor later on we're going to talk about that was uh, just as bad as he was, and they had to take him down too. But uh, before this guy be, would be uh, become emperor, because there was a few months in between. It wasn't, oh, he died, okay, as of today, you're now, you know, it was, uh, it was a process, as it is today, you know. Like we had our abdication here just a little while ago, and we had an abdication in May, then the actual enthronement in October. There's a few months in between, and and during this, you know, this guy knew knew he. I guess he was going to become emperor, so he was just, uh, you know, big headed, big ego, and whatever he was doing. Uh, of the four other brothers, um, even his own little brother knew he was kind of bad. Uh, uh, the, only the younger two that were uh, from. Well, there were three from uh, uh, his actual wife, um, the, the the younger two, uh, which was uh, Kamoya, Yai Mimi, and uh, Su, uh, Suize. Um, 
they were like, man, you, you, you know, you've got to, to take this guy down. And because Higoyai took off, he didn't want to be have any part of any of this. And uh, he says, you know, you're going to be the rightful, you know, in line. So why don't you take this guy down? Well, they talked about it. We got a plan and they did. And so they went to uh, keep this within the five to eight minutes that I've been trying to, I want to keep these at. He, um, they, they, they found where he was staying. He was staying this one, one in, he was staying all by himself and they got a bow and arrow. They conducted a plan. They snuck in and bam. Uh, uh, so he said, I'm going to open the door and then you shoot him with the arrow and we're done and I'll support you. And, uh, you know, let's get this over with because we cannot allow this guy to be, become emperor. So it went down the, the day came and, uh, they got to the door. They had a bow and arrow. Everything set. As soon as they opened the door, and Kamui I mean, boop, and he's like, freaks out when he's confronted with this guy because ever this guy was, he was, he was in, you know, he he wasn't in bed yet. I guess, I guess he was standing there, and he started, you know, you know kill me, kill me, you know, all these Clint Eastwood kind of things, uh, you know, provoking the guy, and uh, Kamui I Mimi mean, didn't have have it in him to kill kill his half brother. Uh, so, you know, so he's a standing there and he's like, you got to do it. You got to do it. And I'm sure there was a lot of tension going on. And I guess so he just took the bow and arrow, whoop, whopped him in the chest with one arrow. The guy turns around, tries to run out the window and he shoots him again in the back. So, uh, he had an arrow hit here and then an arrow in the back and, uh, killed, killed him. Uh, so, um, you know, after all that said and done, uh, Kamali Mimi was like, you know, I don't have the courage to be over. I, I can't, I can't do this. I can't. Um, you, you're, you're a lot more braver than I am. And, uh, an emperor needs to be brave and be able to confront things. And I just, you know, thought I could, but I can't. So he ceded his position to Suize and Suize became emperor in 581 BC. He was emperor until 549 BC. Um, so pretty wild story there. Um, you know, you hear of all of these, uh, different kinds of things that go on, uh, in different, different, uh, you know, uh, cultures. Uh, but, uh, I just thought, you know, that, that was interesting that this all came down, uh, to, uh, you know, not because, not because they wanted the glory of it, not because they wanted the position or because their mother was the actual, you know, wife of, uh, of Jimu. Um, it was just wrong. They, they didn't want, to have that person be an emperor for and 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 be able to you know um, not take care of the people in the way that an emperor should. So it's a, it's a lot of honor and integrity in that. And uh, so that's the story of how the second emperor um, Suize uh, came to power. There you go. Uh, got more for you. Uh, we got 126 of these guys on my next one. And we're going to skip uh, over a few, uh, put them all in one thing because there's not a lot of information on them, but uh, we'll, we'll continue. So Richard from Spirits of Japan.